Hello and welcome. I finished Living World Season 3 yesterday, and I've been really excited to talk about it, but I wanted to get a little bit of time to put my thoughts in order, uh, because I really do think that Living World Season 3 is my favorite chunk of the game so far. I know I keep saying that, but the game just keeps getting better and better. And a lot of that is the story, and a lot of that is the zones, and a lot of that are the instances. We're going to get into all of it, but let's start with a quick spoiler warning, uh, there will of course be spoilers in this video. Uh, the footage you're seeing right now is me attempting a jumping puzzle because I wanted something that was mostly spoiler free but still was tied into the the Living World season three. Uh, but yeah, no, it uh, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in this. So if you have not yet played Living World season three, uh, please go do that first, and then come back to this uh, because there will be full spoilers for this. But let's start with story. And then as we get to each new zone, I can talk about the maps because I think these are some of the best maps in the game uh, and absolutely some of my favorite maps in the game. So we start out with the Memorial to Air, right? And that's a really, really solid segment that gives us some warnings that something's going on with Bram. And we're going to talk characters after we get done talking story, uh, but gives us a little bit of warning that something's going on with Bram. And... From there, by the way, just a quick shout out. The fact that you have your choice of how you want to memorialize air is really cool. And I think represents the different relationships that you could have with air, depending on if you were Norn or if you spent more time with air uh, in the dungeons or however you did it, uh, you get to choose how you want to memorialize air. And I think that's really cool uh, because, you know, air's a great character. I miss air Stigalkin already. Uh, but not as much as Bram, who has gone, like, off the deep end. And we're going to get there. Um, but from there, we go back to Radanovis, of course. And here we have kind of a surprise. Uh, Almora Soulkeeper is looking for Ritlock. And uh, Ritlock has to leave. And by this point, you've already made the new guild. And things should be, you know... Rocking along and everything going great, but Ritlock is now gone, and uh, Bram, of course, is, as we find out later, he's not going to want to join up. And then, of course, you know, Rox is on board, because, of course, Rox is Rox. Rox is great. Uh, but just the way that all of this rolls out of, hey, now Ritlock's gone, a tree just came back, because, you know, hey, the Black Citadel's not too happy that he's ignoring their summons. And that makes sense, right? It's not... At that point, it doesn't feel like anything strange is going on. It's just, oh yeah, you know, Ritlock didn't show up like he was supposed to, and so we gotta, we gotta wait for him to come back to be able to be a part of the team and everything. That's fine. Uh, but as we slowly go through this set of living world, our allies that are on call for us drop lesser, and lesser, and lesser, and lesser until really, there's not many people left to have our back for the things that are happening towards the end. And I think that is on purpose, right? We get to go to our first new map, which is Bloodstone Fen. And Bloodstone Fen is such a cool zone. I love Bloodstone Fen. Right away, this map has a crazy thing that happens, sets the stage for, hey, the White Mantle that we probably should have done something about a long time ago and didn't is still a problem. And now... We're not sure exactly how we're going to stop them. And maybe a Mersat's back. And it's, I love this zone. I love the story in this zone. I think the zone itself is really cool with the Bloodstone enemies around. And the mastery track that you have for this expansion is really cool and comes with a lot of cool stuff. But I just really enjoy this. I have completed four of the six Return Twos. And the only ones I'm missing are Returns to Draconis Mon and Return to Siren's Landing. Uh, because of the jumping puzzle in Draconis Mons, and uh, because I just haven't done enough events yet in Siren's Landing. Picking up the pieces here and, and trying to deal with the White Mantle as we figure out what happened while we work with our team to be able to, specifically with Kaith, which is great, uh, to be able to try and figure out what happened with Codicus and with Lazarus, last of the Mersat. It's all really cool, and... That alone is not just a, a great intro, but it's all interesting stuff in and of itself. The first episode of each Living World season is like normally really good, but I don't think any of them have quite the the hit that Bloodstone Finn and everything that happens there does. Uh, Gates of Maguma is really good, though. When I think back, Gates of Maguma is really good. So this was a great start, 
And I think that had it just kept up this level, it would have been really good. I'll put it this way. Of all the Living World seasons so far, this is the one I'm most excited to replay on another character. Just because of how much fun I had going through these maps. After that, we had Rising Flames, which is episode two. We have uh, Timey's changing to her lab, adding in the simulations where you get to, you know, have some fun time there. You do get to fight with Ritlock at this point. This is before he's been taken away, but he wasn't with you for everything happening in Bloodstone Finn, you know. Um, and then we have to go to the Fire Islands, or specifically Ember Bay. And man, is Ember Bay cool. The script that are over there uh, laid out on the the rocks next to the lava, and you have to rescue them to finish that heart. You have the ability to jump around with those those fumes. And what I love, I think, the most about Living World Season 3, flumes, not fumes, uh, is that it works like Heart of Thorns did, where you're gaining new masteries that unlock new movement abilities and new combat abilities for you that feels like a Metroidvania, which I've said many times is my favorite type of game. And so, like, you unlock these movement abilities and the maps open up to you even more than they did before. And, man, do I like Ember Bay. Everything going on in Ember Bay is super cool. Going to find the, uh, the dwarf that's all broken up and you get his thumb? What? <laughs> uh, Roban is his name and just... Such a cool idea, finding the circus, having to turn the machines back on. This is a really cool sequence of events that takes you all around the map, and so you're naturally completing the map as you're doing it. You're finding all kinds of cool new events to do. There's cool mastery points in all these zones. It, again, these are the best zones of the game, in my opinion, and I'm really excited to get to Path of Fire for everything going on there, uh, because I've heard those zones are really good, too, but... From there, we get, of course, the hatching of the egg, where we have to go back and protect the egg, and uh, Lazarus the Mersat is there to help us, the Mersat, uh, to help us protect the egg, and uh, then in a surprising turn of events where, you know, she decides to go her own way, Marjorie decides to join up with Lazarus under the guise of watching him, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's just to, like, push back against, hey, the commander's always calling the shots, or just, hey, I'm gonna do my thing my way like I always used to, but either way, Jory, she goes with Lazarus, and of course, around this point, we have both Jory and, uh, Casimir that are saying they'll join Dragon's Watch, which is great, but it just, I don't know, it, it really surprised me, man, to have Jory... Go to, to join up with him, and of course that has ramifications for later, which again is why I said earlier, this is all on purpose. So now we're down Bram, which we don't know that yet, but we're down Bram. Uh, Rox is after Bram, so we're down Rox. Marjorie is with Lazarus, so we're down Marjorie, and Ritlock is back at the Black Citadel, so we're down Ritlock. So we just have four of our key members gone, and all we really have left is Cass and Timey. But it's a, it's a historic day, right? I mean, you know, Orin's been born and named, and now it's time to train her up. And that's a really fun sequence there where you, you go through different stuff with Orin and, you know, show her how to be kind to people and show her how to take care of people and to defend people. And those challenges are all really fun. I liked those a lot. I like Orin. She's cool. And this is when we get our stuff with Bram, where, man, we got to, like... <sighs> Holbrick and the, we find out we're, we're following him and we go to F bitter frost frontier which is another really cool zone uh, i love the way that this zone is like a mix between the ice and the warm heat from that geyser in the back corner of the map i love that as you get closer to it the ice thins out but as you get further away from it the ice is more and more severe you have those giant trees and one thing i've neglected to mention talking about these zones is that each zone has its own individual currency and i love that because it means as i'm exploring i'm picking up this stuff that lets me get weird cool bonuses in each one uh like i have an additional karma bonus in siren's landing which we're gonna get to you know but I think this is a really cool set of maps, and Bitterfrost Frontier is one of my favorites. The Codan's Flame and learning all of the stories about it and 
how they got the flame and what's going on there. Just, again, incredible, right? Absolutely love that. I love the Codens as a people anyway, so it's it's just really cool to get to spend more time with them. And each spot here, there's little things like, hey, you know, you go and pretend to be a Svarnir by dressing up like one. Uh, you go make the elixir, and then you go help uh, Bram and Rox uh, to fight their way through. And you get a bunch of stuff here. We're going to get to Bram in a little bit and talk about him as a character because, man, do I have some thoughts. But just, again, the commander is left basically alone after this. And he's in a tough spot where not only is he alone, but specifically with Bram, Bram blames the commander and is furious at the commander. And how does he fix this? How does the commander fix this? I don't know yet. We're going to find out. But neither does the commander. The commander doesn't know how to fix it yet. And it just, it really hammers home that, hey, this is a bad situation. We also know at this point that the Elder Dragons are legitimately feeding off of each other's deaths to be able to strengthen themselves. So Zaitan's influence is still around. And Mordramoth's influence is still around. And Jormag and Primordis and Trogatoric can just use that. And it's a problem. But this leads us to the meeting of the ministers and an incredible surprise attack that we have to try and defend them and fight off where Logan Thackeray comes back and we get to, we get to fight there. And it seems like Logan Thackeray is going to be leading the pact, which I mean, honestly, as much as I'd like him in Dragon's Watch, that makes a lot of sense. It really does. Then we go to Lake Doric and Lake Doric is probably my least favorite of the six, but it's still, in my opinion, a big step up. I'm like, I love Dry Top and the Silver Waste, but Lake Doric is like a full zone, you know? The different parts in it in every every different way. Uh, a lot of cool stuff going on there. Hidden rooms in places, spying, reconnaissance, pretending to be a member of the White Mantle so you can sneak in and destroy their plans. A lot of cool stuff going on there. Uh, I don't love the meta event in the top right corner where you have to... Uh, like, fight your way up a hill of incredibly precise snipers to try and, and do that. But I was able to do it. I went the back way. But, you know, just that's kind of annoying. But otherwise, this is a really cool zone, too, where, like, magic has ravaged the lake itself, and now the lake itself is pretty much dried up, and you have people desperately fighting back against the White Mantle. There's the siege that happens. There's a lot of really cool events that are here, too. It just There's a lot of cool stuff going on in Lake Doric. And it all comes together with going to Codicus's manor. And, unfortunately, the loss of Dimmy. And picking up another character that's going to be really interesting as we go forward. But I'm really curious how she's going to go forward. Uh, and that is Dimmy's friend. Uh, who is not specifically uh, Catechus's daughter, but Catechus has been treating as if it was his daughter because he prefers her to Demi's betrayal. I really liked this instance. Uh, I thought it was really fun exploring Catechus's manor. I went and found all the points of interest because, of course, it did. And uh, in the middle of all this, we also get Canuck's freedom. Canuck is free. And unfortunately, he won't join Dragon's Watch because he wants to enjoy his freedom. Which makes sense. Again, none of this is, is forced. None of this is ham-fisted. But it, it all just continues to leave Commander alone at the end of it. It's just him and Timey and Cass, sort of, now. Um, all of this comes to a head, though. Because Timey has a machine... And the machine is is going to make the difference. It's going to let us be able to stop Jormag and Primordis. And in the middle of all this, Lazarus shows up. And we drop his garb, his guys, because we know he's not Lazarus. Uh, Marjorie's here. Cass is here. Timey's here. And uh, in the really cool instance where we have to use the mirrors to be able to drop his guys, we find out this is Balthazar. The god of war and fire for the Crichtons. Human god of war and fire. And Casimir's overwhelmed. 
Marjorie's hurt the fight, and for the first time we see Cass like not go to Marjorie. She just leaves. She can't handle this. She's been incredibly faithful to the six, and she just cannot handle it. She breaks down. And Jory's hurt. Cass is gone. We have a god on our hands while we're trying to deal with the dragons. And everything is falling apart, right? Now we're in a situation where Timey has figured out if we kill either Jormag or Primordis, then everything's done. Everything's over. Uh, the world is going to fall out of balance, right? Bram still wants to kill Jormag desperately and now has no choice because he shot an arrow and broken the fang from the bow that he got when we went to help him and broken the fang. So now all the Norn want him to kill Jormag too. And we have Balthazar who's stolen the machine because he wants to kill Primordis and take his power. It seems like we don't know his full goals here completely, but it's just an incredible series of events that has led the commander to being just the commander and Tybee pretty much. And what are we going to do, man? And I love this because we, you feel so powerless. Whereas this game normally makes you feel incredibly powerful. Everybody, for the most part, respects you. You can go anywhere you want. You've killed Elder Dragons. Now you're in a situation where part of Krita hates you because you're against Balthazar. And the other part of Krita doesn't know what to think because one of their gods has returned. And their whole community is just breaking apart. Their whole religion is breaking apart. Everybody's waiting for the other gods to show up now. And in the middle of all this, you go to Draconis Mons, which is a really cool zone. Uh, man, interacting with the druids, how vertical this zone is, all of the different areas that make it feel like different zones all push together because of the outpouring of magic and Primordius' influence and Balthazar's influence. It's all super cool. And you get it. You go and you collect the Elder Druid's protections from all across the map. And you go face down Balthazar. And you win, right? You, you destroy the machine so it can't be used to kill Primordius and throw everything into, into like, chaos. And this is a really cool instance to uh, having to take out the dogs tomorrow and to gone. And it's really good. And especially because, like, Balthazar's dogs are a thing a human character can summon because they have faith in Balthazar and they summon his hounds. It, it's a really nice touch. But in the middle of all this, Primordis has been wounded. Shormag has been wounded. And we find out in the next chapter that, hey, they almost had Jormag. They had him surrounded. And Bram was this close to killing him, which would have been bad because it would have, you know, destroyed everything. But also means that Bram is now furious at the commander. And this leads us to the final episode, One Path Ends, where you start out teaming up with a Shining Blade Exemplar. And that's a cool sequence, right? That's a really cool sequence. And Carida, as we get her, her name later on, is a great character. I love her. Probably my favorite addition uh, in this chunk of story uh, in this living world. And we work with Carida, go back to the Shining Blade headquarters, get inducted into their ranks, so we have an oath that binds us now. And then we go to Siren's Landing. And Siren's Landing is really, really cool. Maybe my favorite map out of the six. Uh, probably tied with Bitterfrost Frontier, right? Siren's Landing is or coming back. You get to actually see, which I thought we never would because they're not going to go back and just change all the old or maps. You get to actually see a part of or where life is growing again. And you get to feel vindicated that, hey, you know, I did that. That's because of me. And it's super cool. Love that. And you start following the Eye of Janthir to try and track down Balthazar. But instead of Balthazar, you track down the actual Lazarus with Carida, who you wind up, wind up finding out is Livia. And you kill him. It's a really cool sequence. It's really fun. Um, 
And you do it. You work together with this incredibly fun character in the form of Carida, who has a really interesting relationship with the commander. And then you find out that this is Livia, who has hunted the Mursat forever. And this is the last one. And the, the all of Tyria is now completely free of the Mursat's influence. And then you find out that Balthazar's in the Crystal Desert. And then it ends. And I don't think it's as abrupt an ending as Living World Season 2. I think this is a pretty solid spot to end on. But it just, hey, we have nothing. We have Timey. And she's not nothing. Don't misunderstand me. I love Timey. And Timey only gets better in this with the scanner and with her having to get past her own problems with, with forcing herself to take a nap and with being stuck in the middle of like, hey, I made this machine that can kill the dragons, but it might kill everyone, and now Balthazar stolen it, and it might kill the dragons, or it might kill everyone. I put us in this spot, what do I do? It's just you and Timey. There is no one else. You don't have Bram. You don't have Rox. You don't have Ritlock. You don't have Casimir. You don't have Marjorie. And Livia's not gonna come with you. You don't have Logan. You don't have Zoja. You don't have anything. You don't have Kaith. Kaith is off doing her own thing as usual. It's kind of just you, right? And it really hammers home how powerless the commander is when he doesn't have his guild to back him up or he doesn't have the pack to back him up. And I'm really excited to get in the Path of Fire because I want to get in there. But we've talked the maps. We've talked the story. Let's talk characters. Uh, Timey, of course, in this expansion is incredible. It's expansion in this living world is incredible. I love Timey in this. She is wonderful. She is fun. She has to deal with a lot of her own issues, and she works past them pretty well. You get introduced at one point to one of her friends, a uh, person that she's worked with a lot, and this person doesn't make it, and Timey has to just move on from that. She can't dwell on it. There's no time to dwell on it. Uh, which is really good growth for her as a character. Uh, Rox is, of course, still Rox. Really fun, really awesome, uh, but isn't really around that much because she's following Bram. Ritlock is great, as always. He's still Ritlock, but again, he's not around for all that much this expansion, or this living world. I keep trying to call it an expansion, and I guess it is in some ways. Marjorie is really interesting in this. I like that they gave her a little bit more of, hey, you know, I am a member of your guild, but... I'm also my own person, and I make my own choices. And, of course, that comes back to Biter. Not to prove that her, she was wrong for making her own choices, but just to remind people that sometimes we make the wrong choice. And we needed her information, but it, it sure didn't pay off very well for her. Casimir in this is great. Being unsure about what's going to happen with Jory, and then the reveal that her faith might be misplaced breaks her in a way that I find really interesting and I'm excited to to run into her again. Uh, Logan is great in this as as always. He's just Logan right? There's some really interesting stuff of like maybe he's stepping away from the queen because maybe he's realized that his love for her makes him too close to her to be able to protect her uh, which I find really interesting and then you have of course Kerida which is a great addition to the cast. Uh, really really fun character. I love all of her banter with the commander and specifically, like, there are so many hints that she's Livia. She won't reveal her identity. She's been with the the, pack, the Shining Blade for a long time. Uh, at one point, she says out and over over the radio because she doesn't know how to use it. Just a lot of fun stuff there. Kanak is great. Getting his freedom. Really happy about that. And I think the commander gets some really good character beats here of, you know, hey, at one point, my druid friends are helping me to be able to resist the heat in this volcano. And Timey's like, all right, man, I think the stress is getting to you, but okay. And then the stuff with Bram of the frustration there of why can't you understand? I didn't want your mother to die. I wasn't trying to do that. I didn't kill her. I was trying to stop her from dying. I didn't make more Dramoth knock us out of the sky. I'm not trying to steal her legacy. I know you're upset. And it just, it's, it's really interesting to me, the dynamic of like timey saying, you know, well, Hey, maybe Bram will come around. And it's just, I don't have time to deal with this right now from the commander. I think that there's a lot of growing for all of the cast to do. And I'm really excited to see them do it because 
I love these characters. These characters mean a lot to me. And this Living World season just really hammered that home for me. Great boss fights, great character moments, great story, great maps. This is the best Living World so far. I'm really excited because I know I only have more to go, right? Path of Fire is coming up. Living World Season 4 is coming up. Ice Brood Saga is coming up. Into Dragons is coming up. I'm really excited to keep moving through this game, and I'm so thankful for everybody that's supporting me in doing so. Uh, again, even just watching the videos is great, but the likes and the shares, the subscribes that we get from it all mean so much. Uh, your comments, I read all of them. Thank you so much for your support as we move through these, and let me know your thoughts on Living World Season 3 in the comment section down below. Uh, do you think Bram is being too much of an edgelord? Because I haven't talked about Bram, really. I've been skirting around it. I get where he's coming from, but man, Bram, just calm down for a second, man. Just a second. Just think about your friendship with the commander and what he's done for you and calm down for a second, Bram. Come on. Because, man, this Lone Wolf Bram stuff is getting old fast. But, again, I think he will. I, I think he'll grow. I hope he does anyway. But let me know your thoughts on the comment section, or in the comment section down below, I should say. Uh, and until next time, I've been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. Remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum. The Guild Wars 2 and Living World Season 3 have to offer.